Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm going to be documenting this photo here. This is the photo of the very first time that I got to hold my boys over 11 years ago. <laughs> I'm going back in time, documenting some older photos, and I'm using my January, nope, February <laughs> wild hair kits. Um, and I asked for items that would match the Indigo Hills 2 collection from Pink Fresh Studios. So I had ordered some of these die cut pieces and stickers and things like that. And then the kit came with that geometric heart cut file, those lawn fawn, um, wood veneer pieces, that purple gradient paper, and some other goodies. I will link my uh, unboxing down below for you guys. Um, but I'm going to start by backing this cut file. I knew for sure that I wanted to use this in something this month. And uh, so it kind of worked perfect with this gradient paper. That way I didn't have to like paper piece different um, papers on the background of this. Uh, it just added a little bit more interest and was easy. Uh, the flu has hit my house this week and so I'm looking for anything and everything easy for projects because to be quite frank I'm exhausted and don't feel good. <laughs> my kids don't feel good so I wanted to just hop on and create a really quick and easy um, entry and I was able to do or not entry but uh, layout and I was able to do that with this kit this month just because everything coordinates so well and is so easy to work with. So you can see here, I'm just sticking that cut file down onto the paper and then just cutting out any of the excess and then bam, it looks like it's some complicated piece and it took like two seconds to do. <laughs> so I am working on a six by eight layout and I have some 110 pound white cardstock here and I'm going to do some mixed media. So I am going to prep this with some clear watercolor ground from Daniel Smith. Um, this is kind of my favorite way to prep anything right now. My Bible pages, cardstock. Uh, I just like the way that mediums behave on the watercolor ground better than gesso and it protects the paper just the same. So I'm just using a gift card to apply two thin layers of that watercolor ground drying in between each layer. And now I can go in and do some mixed media with gelatos. So I don't use a lot of gelatos on my channel and so I'm trying to push myself to use some of the mediums that I haven't used in a while. So I pulled out, um, this is the color satellite. This is from the iridescent gelatos. And I just, you could see, scribbled some on some plastic packaging, activated it with water, and then now just smushing it into the background. Uh, I also have the color fig and the color margarita mix. So I just tried to pick colors that would coordinate with the Indigo Hills collection. And these worked perfect. That satellite color has this like iridescent green shimmer to it but it also has kind of some purple hues to it. It was really, really pretty when it dried. And so it really goes well with that like watercolor wash of color that's in the Indigo Hills collection. So you can see I'm kind of like splattering color on there and just making, making a mess. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, it doesn't have to be fancy. If it gets too wet, I just blot up some of the water and um, just kind of go with it. So now I'm going to add just a hint of this margarita mix. It's a perfect yellow green that matches the pop of yellow green that's in that collection. And so you can see I'm not smushing that. I'm just kind of splattering it onto the background. I don't want tons of this color because it, it can be a little intense. It isn't exactly my favorite color, though it really works with the colors in this uh, collection here. So I'm just kind of testing out a couple different brushes uh, and to play around. If you're not liking your splatters, with techniques like this, try different paintbrushes. Uh, fluffier, not so fluffy, small, dense, not dense. Just try a few different things and you get different results. So now that that's all dry, I can kind of position things where I want it. I have a couple of the die cut pieces from the collection. Um, again, that cut file. And then my photo is printed uh, three by four size and in black and white. It was a very, very busy photo. There's all this medical equipment behind me because they were in the NICU. Uh, if you don't know their story, my boys are identical twins and they were born two months premature. They were very, very, very sick. Uh, and so this is the very first time that I actually got to hold them together and it had been about a day since they were born before I was even able to see them. So the photo was very busy. I'm a hot mess. My hair is greasy. We're a mess. That's just moms. We can relate, right? Like you're just a mess after you give birth. So 
black and white helps disguise a lot of the crazy. Uh, I am pulling out one of these six by six papers from my kit this month. This is from the Emerson Lane collection from Heidi Swap, and it, it just kind of helps the photo stand out from the stuff that's going on in the background. So I just add a very, very thin matte to that photo. And then you can kind of see how this is going to come together. Six by eight can be a little bit challenging because some of these die cut pieces are pretty big. Uh, and so it can kind of overtake the page, but I kind of like it that look. I have a hard time with white space <laughs> and blank space. I need like all the things. And so, I don't know. I will say six by eight. I think you use less product than you would with 12 by 12 because you're not trying to fill a 12 by 12. I mean, obviously that makes sense. You're using less product. Um, and so your products kind of go further when you work in smaller scale like this, which is something I, I'm frugal. <laughs> so I appreciate that. And then I'm just using a glue stick to adhere all these down. I'm not going to add any dimension. I thought about maybe adding some foam, but this is going to go into a pocket page um, in my six by eight album. And so I'm not going to add too much dimension to it. Uh, it's got a lot going on with the die cut florals and the, the gelato and just all that. So I didn't think that it really needed more <laughs> added to it. And I'm just going to use this die cut to kind of cover up some of the like space in the front of the photo where my, my feet are actually propped up because my feet were horribly swollen and so they're kind of propped up on a pillow and so there's just a lot going on in that photo and so I'm going to use the die cut just to kind of close it in so you're just focusing on me and the boys and then here there's this love die cut piece that came in that indigo hills die cut set and then I also have the alphabet stickers as well these are all items that I ordered separate and then I customized or like asked for my wild hair kit to be customized to match with the indigo hills collection so uh, I love being able to do that so that I can use different products that maybe I wouldn't have picked up to go with this collection and it also kind of breaks it up so you're not just using all the same product not that there's anything wrong with that but um, it kind of just brings in some variety of um, products and colors and things. So you can see I'm just using a T ruler to line up these alphas and some eyelash tweezers, staples in my craft room. <laughs> and so my title is going to say love at first sight since this is the very first time that I got to see and hold them. And uh, I use this pop of pink because there's some pink in those florals. I, I was torn between using these and the purple, though the purple ones didn't quite match the purple in the paper that I used in that heart but I think this works okay. So I decided this at this point just to add a couple small embellishment pieces just to finish it off. So I pulled out those Lawn Fawn wood veneer hearts. Those came in my kit this month. And then um, I'm playing around with the third one, but I actually end up pulling out one of the cardstock stickers from the collection that I have sitting over there and swapping one of those out. Um, at this point, it's just really busy. So I'm trying to kind of minimize how much I stick on here. <laughs> so I end up picking that dark blue heart and kind of swapping that out there. And that just adds some texture and dimension and some final little details, nothing too crazy. Uh, I just use my glue stick to adhere those wood veneer pieces down and then those uh, cardstock, cardstock? chipboard <laughs> chipboard pieces sorry guys that's the day quill brain just is not working the chipboard pieces um have adhesive backing so i cover my photo and as one last detail i'm just going to add a little bit more of that margarita mix gelato splatters on there just to kind of tie all the pieces together and make them look cohesive and add a little bit more pop of that green since there wasn't a whole lot of it since the die cuts kind of covered things up dry that and then that is it for my layout today so if you have any questions or comments be sure to leave those down below check out the description box for links to everything that i used to do to use today head on over to the wild hair kits blog to see more close-up photos give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed and until next time thank you so much Bye bye